All right, how you doing, Sacramento? All right, we are very excited to be here uh, for the Back to School Kickoff Rally. You know, we wanted to do something really special for you young people to let you know how special you are, how important you are, and we wanted to kick off this school year the right way. And I brought in the A-Team to come and greet you to help you with Back to School Kickoff. Um, I want to just thank, we have 250 students here um, from four different school districts. We've got elementary school students, we have high school students, we've got public school students, we have public charter school students, and private school students. So we have everybody represented here today. So give yourselves a round of applause. I want to, before we get started here, I want to make sure we thank the staff. There are so many people behind the scenes that it takes to really pull off this type of event. So there's volunteers, there's staff, there's, there's people from all genres who somehow have helped us. So let's give them one big appreciation as well. So there's some people that I want to introduce you to and I want you to hear from. But as a mayor of the city of Sacramento, um, I will tell you that we cannot have a great city without great schools. And we will not have a great schools without you students making a real commitment with your teachers, with your principals, with the other counselors and your parents to make sure that we're giving you a great quality education. And one of our special guests here, the taller gentleman over here with the red tie that looks like a basketball player, he actually did play a little bit uh, professionally. He may or may not talk about that. But he is the U.S. Secretary of Education. His name is Arnie Duncan. And he's, he is the highest official in the United States when it comes to education. He reports directly to President Barack Obama. And for him to be out here on the weekend before school starts is really him and the president sending a message to you of saying how important you are, how important students are. And you students represent students all over this country, but they're in Sacramento on this particular day. He is somebody that he has flown out here. He just got into town this morning, and he's spending time away from his family to be here in Sacramento. So we want to make sure we listen very closely what, to what he has to say. The governor's going to introduce him in a minute, but I just personally want to thank uh, the Secretary of Education, Arnie Duncan. He has a very tough job. Uh, there's not a lot of people who appreciate what he does, but he's going to bat to fight for you on a regular basis. So, Secretary Duncan, thank you for coming out as well. And now it's my honor to introduce to you your governor, Governor Otto Schwarzenegger. Before I bring him up, let me just tell you a little bit. He has been committed to education um, for many years. I'm going to talk about what he's done as a governor first and then give you a little bit of background. Um, he is, as a governor, he knows how important career technical education is. Um, that is a very important component that we make sure that young people in community college and others are learning vocational skills and things to make sure that we're a highly educated and prepared workforce for the 21st century. He's also committed to make sure that we have access to high quality preschools and early childhood education. So knowing that it starts when you're really young. If we can give young people a high quality education when they're young, it'll make a difference for the rest of their lives. Now you know what he used to do in his other life. Well, you guys are so young. Well, I'm going to tell you what he used to do in his other life in a second. But he also is promoting fitness and how important healthy living and nutrition and fitness is because if you don't eat right and you don't take care of your body, then certainly you're not going to learn as much as you should and do as well both in and out of the classroom. Many years ago, he was also committed to after-school programs to make sure that young people have more after-school programs, things to do after school that are positive and productive, and especially when you live in low-income areas. He now is also committed, and he started something called Green Jobs to make sure that you young people after 14, 15, 16 years old can get jobs in the green economy. In California, that's something that he's promoted um, as a governor. And the last thing that he's promoted that I'm very proud of and the secretary I'll talk about in a minute um, is something called the Race to the Top Fund. And it's really an opportunity for California to be eligible 
for more dollars in our state to make sure that we have better teachers and qualified teachers to make sure that you have more resources. Um, and he went out with a bold initiative and did something that was not popular a couple weeks ago and said that we in California need to change our laws to make sure that we're eligible for the race to the top funds. So he'll probably talk about that in a sec. But long before he became governor, he was committed. He came to this country, he worked his butt off, oops, sorry. He came to this country and he worked his tail off and uh, got a great education. He went uh, to Sa uh, Santa Monica Community College. He went to the University of Wisconsin, got a master's deg degree at Northwestern. Um, and I think most of you know this, he's probably one of the greatest bodybuilders that we've ever seen. So underneath all that, you can see his chest poking out here. So <laughs> one of the best bodybuilders, and he's still in great shape and works out regularly. And then some of you probably know him from this, a movie star. Terminator, Total Recall, Kindergarten Cop, Batman and Robin. This was Mr. Freeze and Batman and Robin here. So out of all those accomplishments, I think probably what's probably been most impressive to me is he married a Kennedy. So he was smart enough to marry the right person when he came to this country. Let's give a warm welcome and round of applause for the 38th governor of California, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Well, thank you very much, Mayor Johnson, for the wonderful introduction. Um, I love this guy. <laughs> so the great, great enthusiasm, and uh, he has uh, always been a great leader and, and believed in children and in education. As a matter of fact, that's how I met you uh, when you were in charge of uh, charter schools and uh, for the underperforming kids, and uh, did an extraordinary job. And he has such great enthusiasm. He's such a great leader now as mayor of uh, the city of Sacramento and a great leader also in education. And that's why we're all here again today. And so thank you very much and give him a big hand for the great job that he's doing. I also want to say thank you very much to Secretary Arne Duncan for being out here. We know each other already for 15 years when we started the, the after-school programs uh, all over the United States. One of the cities that we started the after-school programs was in Chicago and he was already then the leader of the Chicago education system and did a fantastic job. He was uh, always considered as like the guy that saves education in Chicago. So he did a great job. So I was so excited when President Obama has, uh, you know, appointed him to this position to run with education and to do the same thing as he's done in Chicago, to do the same thing for the whole United States. So I'm so excited about working with him and uh, helping uh, California. So let's give him a big hand for the great job that he has been doing. Now, you know, you, you've probably read that uh, the test about the high school exit exams. They say that 90% plus of kids are now passing the high school exit exams. And, um, you know, some people said it's alarming because 10% have failed. I don't see it as alarming because it's the same thing as you say, I want to lose 10 pounds and then you lose only nine. It's not failing. I mean, it just means that I have to go for the extra pound. And the same is with this. We just have to go now for the extra 10%. You have done your job, you've done everything that you can, but we have an education system that needs to be reformed. We have a system in place, and this is our responsibility as grown-ups. Our responsibility is to provide for you the best schools and the best education system, the best teachers, everything the best, so you have the best chance to go and have 100% of students pass the high school exit exam. And that's where we fall short is with the system. And this is why we're all here today, and we have very... I'm uh, happy to say that, uh, of course, uh, since Arne Duncan became Secretary of Education, he has really put the pressure on the states to make sure that the states follow through and with the race to the top. And uh, they are now providing, the Obama administration is now providing $4.3 billion of money for the schools all over the United States. This is a, a discretionary fund that is available for education reform specifically. It is the, the largest amount of money ever put aside for education reform in the history of America. So think about this. So let's give him a big hand for that. So of course, of course, the way it's set up is states compete for this money. They compete for the $4.3 billion. So those that have the best laws in place and the best system in place can get the most money. So of course, 
California wants to be number one because we're always number one in so many different things. If it is high technology, biotechnology, nanotechnology, green technology, environmental issues, education issues, uh, in, in, a higher, uh, in a university and so on, we're number one. So we should be number one also with this, being the most competitive and getting the most money. The only problem is that we cannot even compete because we don't have certain laws in place to compete. So think about how crazy that is. So this is why I have urged now the legislators, and this is why I call the special session of the legislature to fix that problem. And I have asked our lawmakers to have a plan ready to be signed by the beginning of October. And the reason why we need this to be signed by the beginning of October is because uh, the application process is a long process. It takes more than a month. So we want to be ready when they ask for these applications. There's other states that are already out there. They've filled out the application. They're already competing for this money. So we want to be out there and be competitive. And this is why I urge the legislators to pass those laws, to send it to me so they can sign them immediately. So we, we can be totally in sync with the Obama administration and of the vision of Arne Duncan, our Secretary of Education. So this is what we want to accomplish. Absolutely. And as I said, we are responsible, the grown-ups and the legislators and everyone, in order to create this kind of action uh, for you. And you are responsible, this is the team effort, you are responsible for studying. You are responsible to make sure to listen to your teachers very carefully, to listen to your parents, and to go and read and write every day and do as much work as possible because the bottom line is, and I can tell you this firsthand, that the more education you get, the more you study, the more you read, the more you write, and the more you do your math, the further you will go in life. It's that simple. And in America, because you are in a land of opportunity, and again, I can tell you this from experience because I came from Austria. For some that don't know where it is, it's in Europe. It's on the other side of the globe, okay? When it's year night, it's, even it's, it's daytime over there, so it's the other side. The bottom line is I came over here to this country because this is the land of opportunity. And because of education, and because of having done my homework, and because I went to community college, and because I got uh, higher education and all of this, and also what I learned as a little kid, I got where I am today. I could do my bodybuilding career, my business career, my businesses in general, make millions of dollars, do the movie business, become governor of the state of California, and all of those things, but it's been education and being in the land of opportunity because this would have never happened in any other country, let me tell you that. So this is why I urge all of you to do as much as you can in studying, because each and every one of you can be whatever you want to be. If it is a doctor, an educator, mayor, a secretary of education, governor, action hero, no matter what it is, you can do it. You can do it, but you've got to be smart and you've got to educate yourself and you've got to study, study, study. Do I have your promise? Yeah. I don't hear you. Do I have your promise? Yeah. Very nice. Okay, thank you very much. And now let me introduce Secretary of Education, Arnie Duncan, our champion. Who's ready to go back to school? You guys ready? <laughs> this is my favorite time of year, late August, early September, and you're always a little bit nervous, but you're really, really excited. I'm thrilled to be here for, for a couple reasons. Uh, first of all, let me say something about these two gentlemen. Five, six, seven years ago, I don't even remember how long ago, the governor came to Chicago on a Sunday, real quiet, no media, sat with me and helped us create many more after-school programs in Chicago public schools. Remarkable commitment. Again, no press, no anything. On a Sunday, came and sat and talked about what we wanted to do. And I think all of our schools have to be open longer hours. We have to have great after-school programs for our students. And so I've seen his commitment for a long, long time. And, Governor, I thank you for your tremendous leadership. Please give him a round of applause. And as the mayor alluded, I think at the end of his career, he's not going to be known as a terminator. He's going to be known as the educator. He's got a big, big heart and a lot of courage, and he's lived this. Again, this is personal for him. The mayor here is one of my big uh, heroes. I loved basketball, and I was just amazed at how hard he worked and how good he did. But what was so fun for me was a couple years ago is I saw him start to really in, in, uh, engross himself in the community. And it's interesting to me that so many people like these guys who do well, who are successful, movies, athletics, sports, often sort of forget where they come from. And they become sort of very self-centered, very self-satisfied, and don't give anything back. 
and these two gentlemen exemplify the spirit that's really not about them, that they've worked really hard and come some great things. But as important as that is, what really gives them joy is giving back. And so a couple years ago, I was pleading with Mayor Johnson before he became mayor to come over some schools in Chicago. I watched what he did here, and we needed more good schools in Chicago, so I was talking to him and his team. It didn't quite work out at the time, then he all of a sudden became mayor, but now to have the chance to partner with him, I want to thank both of you for bringing me to the state. This state has so much potential. I think I've been in this job for seven or eight months. I think this is my fourth trip to, to California. You guys are one in eight children in this country. It's just amazing the impact California has. And I think the state is really at a crossroads. It's a chance to really lead the country where we need to go or to fall aside. And this place has phenomenal teachers. It has great, great students like yourselves. And we want to see California go to the next level. If I could ask all the teachers here to please stand up and let's give them a huge round of applause. To all of our students here, to all of our young people, none of these teachers go into teaching to make a million dollars. It doesn't happen. They go into teaching because they care about you and they want to make a difference. And please, as you go forward, find ways to say thank you. You have no idea how much that means to teachers if you say thank you for believing in me. Thanks for pushing me. Thanks for being there when I had some problems. And we have some of the best teachers in the world right here in California. But as a state, again, California is really is a crossroads. California can lead the country where we need to go. We're trying to get dramatically better. Or California can stay in the sidelines. And so it's going to take real courage. It's going to take real leadership. But at the end of the day, we have to do the right thing by the children here. And I sort of, I travel the country, I look at a couple of different statistics around states. And let me tell you one for, for this group to think about. The state of California has about 550,000 freshmen. 550,000 freshmen, but only about 480,000 seniors. So ninth grade, 550,000, 12th grade, about 480,000. As a state, this state is losing 70,000 of you young people every single year. 70,000. That could fill up a football stadium. And where are these young people going? The vast majority are dropping out. And when you drop out, and you guys know this, there are no good jobs out there. There's nothing positive out there for you to do. And so California has to lead the country in getting that dropout rate as low as possible. California has to lead the country in raising the graduation rate as quickly as we, as we can. California can lead the way in not just having all of you graduate, but be prepared to be successful in some form of higher education. Four-year universities, two-year community colleges, trade, vocational training, technical training, whatever it might be. And so California has some great, great things to be proud of. And California has always been a leader. Something about this place has always been a leader. But you now are at a crossroads. And so it's going to be fascinating over the weeks and months ahead to see whether California can take that next step and lead the country where it needs to go. As the governor said, all of us here, all of your teachers, your principals, us three, we just think you have this phenomenal potential. We think every one of you can be the next generation of teachers and doctors and lawyers and social workers politicians and movie stars and it's our job as adults to have the highest of expectations to believe in you to give you the opportunities to fulfill your god-given potential and so don't let anyone ever tell you you're not smart enough or what you can't do can you imagine how many times these guys have been told what they couldn't do and you just sort of fight through it and you fight through it and you have to believe in yourself so i want all of you to be thinking about what are you going to do this school year to make this your best school year ever how many of you had perfect attendance last year? Raise your hands. Give them a round of applause. That's great, great work. Half of these guys' success is just showing up for work every day and working hard. And if you can just show up and keep plugging away day after day, you're going to get better. If you were a B student, I want you to try and get A's. If you're an A student, try and go to the next level. If you're a C student or a D student, please push it up. My mother is just saying, if you're a C student, she says, do you want to have a C life? Nobody here wants to have a C life. All of you want to have an A life. And as you go forward, and you may not realize it today, it's never been more important not just to graduate from high school, but get some form of higher education, be thinking about college. There simply aren't any good jobs out there. You guys are living this. This is a tough, tough economic times, toughest times we've had since the Depression. Do you think there are any good jobs out there if you haven't graduated from high school? There's nothing out there. Think there's any good jobs if you just have a high school diploma? Not much. 
So you've got to be thinking now in fifth and sixth grade, not just your juniors and seniors, in fifth and sixth grade, where am I going to go to college? What am I going to study? And I just ask you to pursue your passion, pursue your dreams, find out what you're good at, find out what you love. All of us have been so lucky that we've been able to do the things all our lives that we love, whether it's bodybuilding or acting in the movies or being a political leader, being a great basketball star, being a political leader. I've loved two things all my life, basketball and education. That's all I've done. And I haven't made as much money as some other folks, but I've been really, really happy and feel so fortunate to have that opportunity. So find your passion. Find out what you would love to do every single day if you didn't get paid a dollar, if you didn't get paid a dime. What would that be? Final thing I'll say, I want to open up to your questions, is I want you to understand that we're doing everything we can to make college possible for you. And you might worry that your family might not have a lot of money, or maybe a mother or father's lost a job, or taken a 30% or 40% pay cut. Let me tell you, we're trying to put unprecedented resources, thanks to the President's leadership and Congress's support, to make college affordable for every single one of you. Already, we've invested $32 billion, $32 billion to increase Pell Grants. to increase Pell Grants and Perkins loans. So it doesn't matter how much money you have or don't have, I promise you, if you work hard, there's going to be scholarship money out there for you. There's a form you have to fill out to go to college. It's called the FAFSA form, the financial aid form. It was way too complicated. It was way too hard. The form itself was a barrier. So we've dramatically simplified that form to make it much easier for you to fill it out and go to the next step. And we're going to continue to make that simpler. And then the final thing I'll say is I'd love to see ma many of you think about becoming the next generation of great teachers and community leaders and working in government and working in nonprofits. And this is a little ways down the road, but what a major, major change, again, thanks to the President and thanks to Congress, is we've put in place something called income-based repayment. So when you graduate from college, if you go into something that doesn't pay as much money, will dramatically reduce your loan payments so you can pursue your dreams. And there are too many young people who have a heart for teaching, a passion for teaching, a, a heart for being uh, active in the community, who have had to go on to do other things because their loans are too high. We'll have removed that barrier. And so we want you to be thinking about public service. We want you to be thinking about a call to action. And there's nothing more important you can do right now to think about becoming those leaders and role models down the road. The final thing I'll say is that if we're serious about getting those 70,000 students who we're losing as a state to the streets every year, that stadium full of young people, if we're serious about getting that to zero, you guys have to be the great positive role models that you can be. So often we as adults talk about negative peer pressure. I'm a big believer in what I call positive peer pressure. And when young people are struggling, who hears about it first? The, the, the teenagers, the students, or the adults? It's always the students. You're always going to know what the issues are. And so I encourage you, if a friend is struggling, having a hard time, step up, be there for them, encourage them to do the right thing, encourage them to be successful in school. If they need help, help them through that. Don't let any of your friends fall off track, and don't let them pull you off track. But going forward, if this is the best school year that you have ever had collectively, if you can help your friends have the best school year they have ever had, you will help to create the climate in which California leads the country where we need to go. So I wish you the best of luck this year. Please work hard. Please commit to getting a great education. And we're going to do everything we can as adults to give you the opportunities to fulfill your dreams. Thank you so much, and I look forward to your questions. I just want to uh, say that we have uh, our own Secretary of Education for California, Glenn Thomas, right here in the front seat. Let's give him a big hand. <laughs> and then over here is someone that was a great, great ed uh, education leader, uh, Margaret Fortune, who just got her own charter school and is going to run her own charter school. Let's give her a big hand also. All right, it's the question time. So we're going to hear from students. I think uh, both the governor. And the secretary each have a, a mic. I want to also thank someone, my colleague, standing up, Robbie Waters, council member Robbie Waters. All right, we're ready. We're ready for your question. Make sure to tell us your name, the grade that you're in, and the school you go to. My name is Kiana Williamson. I go to Sac High and I'm a sophomore. And my question is, do students in the United States know as much as students in other countries? Secretary? 
It's a great question, and I think it varies. I think the best of our students know what other folks know in other countries, but a recent study came out a couple weeks ago that was actually pretty concerning, pretty worrisome for me. It talked about 15-year-olds uh, and their math ability. And as a country, the United States, States ranked 31st. There were 30 other countries in which students knew more math than our students here in the country. And I think that's a real problem. What the president has talked about so much is that we have to, again, lead the world in the percent of college graduates. A lot of folks think we still lead the world. We've actually flatlined. We've stagnated for a long time, and other countries have passed us by. And so I think we have to get much more serious about our education. I think students in other countries in many areas at many grades are performing better than us. And that's, you know, we're better than that as a country. We're better than that. We have to educate our way to a better economy. The only way you have a chance to be successful is to get a great education. And so I think we have to raise the bar. I think we have to raise expectations very significantly. But for the United States to be 31st doesn't make any sense to me. So we've we got a long way to go. Okay. All right. Thank you for your question. Our next question. We're, oh, back and forth. Okay, great. We're ready. I'm Akona and Jenga. <laughs> Um, I go to Rio Tierra Junior High School, and I'm in eighth grade, and my question is, if you were talking to a student who was thinking about dropping out of high school, what would you say? Well, I, I would just, first of all, uh, urge them not to drop out of high school because I would explain to them, as you have heard just now, that the more education you have, the better job you can get, the more money you can make. So it's short-sighted thinking that you go and say, okay, I want to just feel better about myself. I'm going to drop out of school because I can't keep up with the learning material and so on. I think it's much better to just grind it through, to just get your act together, participate in sports, which makes the brain also function better, become a winner, educate yourself, do your homework, listen to the, to the teachers, listen to your parents, and stay in there. You will never regret it. I have seen it over and over again that the better educated you are, the better jobs you have, the better inventory of different jobs that you, you can, can uh, apply for. And uh, I think that's the only way to go. Then after that, I differ with, uh, with some people because there's some people that believe that the, the, the answer is four-year college. I happen to be one of those people that uh, believes that you should go to four-year college if you're ready for four-year college. But if you want to become a mechanic or if you want to become uh, a chef, then there's no reason why you maybe you want to go to four-year college. Maybe later on, if you want to then start a business, you want to go to four-year college. But let's go first and study to become uh, a mechanic, a really qualified mechanic. Go to trade school and learn and make some money and all those kind of things. So I think that there's different directions that you can go. You can go to community college. You can go to four-year college. You can go to trade school. There's different ways to go. We put too much pressure on the four-year college only. And then kids feel like if I, they're not ready for the four-year college, that they want to go and do something else, then they drop out of the system and say, well, yeah, I just cannot do that. So this is why I think we should give them all those options. All right. If I, if, I could add, if I could just add quickly, because I think it's a really, really important question. And as you guys know, young people don't, you know, they're not getting straight A's and going to school every day, and the next day they decide to drop out. It just doesn't happen like that. Dropping out happens at the end of a lot of bad things, where students start missing school, where they start struggling, where grades start to slip, and no one wants to drop out. Maybe they don't feel safe. Maybe they're having problems in the community. Maybe they're having real tough problems at home. Maybe they're under big financial pressure, but there's always a reason why someone drops out. No fifth grader or sixth grader says, I want to drop out when I grow up. That's not what they aspire to, but something goes wrong. And that's when it's so important to me, before you drop out, when a student starts to struggle, that young people help their friends, that we as adults identify those students early on and give them support, the mentoring, the, the, the belief in them that they can be successful. And so dropping out isn't an event. It's something that takes a long time. And I don't think we've done nearly enough to reach those young people who are struggling, who are facing really, really tough issues that might even be hard for us to understand in helping them through those tough times. We've got to get a lot better at that and really help every student get through those tough times and be successful. Awesome. All right, next question. My name is Jadell Lee a senior at Sacramento High School in the School of Business Communications. And my question is for Mr. Arnie Duncan. In your opinion, why are the arts important in education? I think it's so important, as the governor and the mayor said, that different things motivate different students. And so whether it's drama or dance or music or debate or the band or yearbook or academic decathlon or sports, I think all of our students need a reason to be excited about going to school. 
And I tell people jokingly, I didn't necessarily go to school because I love biology. I want to play in a basketball team and do well. To do, you have to play in a basketball team, you do well academically. And so I think it's so important that all of our young people have a chance to experience the arts, to experience academic enrichment, to experience sports, and find their unique interests, find their passion. And the more we do that, again, at early ages, not in just in high school, but in third and fourth and fifth and sixth grade. And the reason, if students are excited about doing something like that, I promise you they won't drop out. If you're in the band, if you're in the drama club, if you're in the orchestra, if you're performing, you're going to get up and you can get to school every single day. So those things that are sometimes called extracurricular, I think are critically, critically important in helping you guys develop in healthy ways and uh, find your passion. Thank you. All right. We'll s rotate to this side of the room. My name is Siri at uh, PS7 Middle School, and I'm in eighth grade. My question is, if you had the power to make one thing happen in every school in Sacramento, what would you do? So the question was, if, if we had the power to make one thing happen, in Sacramento, one thing, what would it be? Go ahead. <laughs> You're the mayor. <laughs> I need some help on that. Um, so thank you for your question. You're a PS 7th, 8th grader. You know, for me, my goal is simple. I just want to make sure that every student has access to a high-quality education, no matter what neighborhood they live in, no matter the color of their skin. I know that if you're given an opportunity where you have great teachers, principles who motivate you, high expectations, with rigorous things that are going to challenge you. Every person in here can go on and become anything they want. And that, to me, is my goal in Sacramento as a mayor, is to make sure that every school, every neighborhood has a high-quality opportunity for young people. So that's my goal. All right, thank you. Um, my name is Jasmine Singh, and I'm a junior at Valley High School, and my question is, what should I be doing right now to prepare myself for my career or college and college? Well, I would say that the, the more you study, the better it is, the more you prepare yourself. I have two daughters. One of them started going to college last year uh, at USC, and this year I have another daughter that went to, is going now to Georgetown in Washington, and uh, let me tell you something. I stress so heavily you know, even to take tutoring classes and to read and to, to write and to do as much studying as possible and prepare themselves, look into what the college you're going to is uh, offering and courses, what is your major, create a vision for yourself on where you want to go, what you want to be in life, which direction you want to go. Because remember that everything starts with a vision. If you don't have a vision and if you just go to school because someone tells you to go to school, it's very hard to study all of these hours and to do your homework and, and all this. But if you have a very clear vision, to me, to go to the gym five hours a day and to lift 50 tons of weights was nothing because I had a very clear vision that I wanted to be a world champion in bodybuilding, a world champion in powerlifting. So that's why it was easy and was fun to do the five hours of training. The same as when I went to college, I saw myself, I want to become a millionaire. I want to make a lot of money. I want to be really smart in how to do business in America because I knew how to do business in Austria, but not in America. So I went to business classes and the math classes, English classes, microeconomics, macroeconomics, all of those things. Studied American history and how they do business and all of those things because I had a vision that I wanted to be a successful businessman. So you've got to have a vision, number one. And number two, I think all of you should always look for a mentor because parents are great. And they should be your number one mentors, but there's nothing better than having an extra mentor that you can go that they can inspire you. And I always urge people that are grown-ups or uh, students that are a little bit older to go and become mentors to younger students. It is such an important thing that you have someone to talk to and someone when you're down and you don't feel like studying that goes and that builds you up and that pumps you up and says, you can do it and let me help you and so on, because that's what makes you then successful. I have had a lot of mentors in my life and I owe them of where I am today. Thank you. Okay, last two questions here. Yes, sir. Hello, my name is Ronnie De La Cruz. I'm a senior of Sacramento High School. And I just want to ask if there's any programs that you um, are willing to um, start up to help kids that are returning to high school that, that are dropped out already because um, in the neighborhood where I live, um, many kids that I've grown up with, they, they were top high, 
high students, they have high grades. But now as I walk home, um, I see them in their bikes. I say, um, well, what you doing out here? Do you have school? They're out there selling drugs. And I've met a good friend of mine just yesterday. He, j he just recently dropped out, and I um, urged him to go to back to school. But I need more help than that because I have, like, about... Ten kids right now that are talking with me. Secretary? Well, first of all, please give him a round of applause for taking care of his friends. It's huge. <laughs> and, and we need to help you, but I promise you, you saying those words to your friend, he's going home and thinking about it. You planted a seed there, and you never know when that's going to turn. But your point's a really, really important one that we can never give up on kids. We've got to try and do, we've got, a lot, we've got to do a lot better job of making sure students don't drop out in the first place. But if they do, we can never, ever, ever give up on them. So the more we have real, en real uh, enrollment programs bringing students back in, the more we have alternative high schools. We need different kinds of schools. Students learn in different ways. We need a whole set of different options. And we also need to really encourage high schools to bring in those students who might be struggling. I think we've done some things in terms of federal policy that has been actually a disincentive for high schools to re-enroll those kids and bring them back in. And so as we go into reauthorizing the No Child Left Behind law, we want to make sure we're really encouraging schools to do that. The money we're talking about, discretionary resources for the country, at the end of the day, we're going to have more than $10 billion, $10 billion to invest in states, to invest in districts, and to invest in nonprofits. And I'm just laser-like focused on increasing the graduation rate, reducing the dropout rate, and seeing more students be successful in some kind of higher education beyond that. And so we want to put hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars in places that are being creative, and that are you know, finding solutions and helping those students be successful. I'll tell you one quick one that's been really fascinating to me. One of the best dropout prevention programs I've seen is when high school students, as freshmen, sophomores, and juniors, actually start to take college classes. When the high school students start to believe that they can really be successful at the higher levels, so the dual enrollment programs, particularly for at-risk students, really helps them to believe, man, I can really make it in college. I need to hang in and be successful. The final thing I'll say is that one of the things I worry a lot about is students who, due to their immigration status, may not have access to college scholarships. So we have to really work on the DREAM Act and to make sure students who don't have all their paperwork, who you know, may have been born in other countries, have a chance to get the financial aid they, they need to be successful. Some students drop out because they literally don't think they can afford college, and we have to remove that impediment. So there are lots of things we have to do, but our entire focus is to help you make sure you get those 10 friends back into school. I just want to add um, to the affordability of college because I'm one of those that has never gotten one penny from the state or from the federal government to go through college. And I had no money when I went to college, when I went to community college. But even though I was a world champion in bodybuilding, I went out and did bricklaying jobs to make some extra money so can I can afford the credits and to go to those classes at community college. And the same is when I went to four-year college, I also worked and to make money so I can afford to go to college. So I didn't ask anybody. So someone that really wants to go and get education, don't ever use that excuse, well, I don't have any money, or my family cannot afford it, or I cannot get this grant, or I cannot get a scholarship or so. That should never stop you. If you th just think about what it takes to become a great champion basketball player, you know, with all the obstacles that you have to overcome, Somehow you will find a way to get the money. You've got to go and work. You've got to go out there. That's what you need to do. And I have seen it firsthand. And so if you can't get the money, don't stop with it and just say, I can't get any education because it work and go part-time to school, work and go part-time to school, and eventually you will get your education. Thank you for that. I think she had, let me hear your question. Your question, and then your question, and that'll conclude our question. So we'll try to answer them real briefly. Young lady, you can go first. Hi, my name is Morgan. I'm an eighth grade student at PS7 Middle School, and my question is, what books have inspired you guys? So what books have inspired us? Okay, that's one. Young lady, can we hear your question? My question was, I'm sorry, is how can students make your job easier? 
Ooh, we like that one. Okay. So what's our favorite book or what books inspired us? What can, we, what can students do to make our jobs easier? And you want to ask your last question there? Uh, this question is actually for the governor, and the question was, um, since we had a, uh, the education budget had to take such a huge cut this past year, uh, what can you do to make sure that funding for education is more consistent from year to year? Okay, so we'll have governor ask that, and then you can ask the books question and how they can help us. Okay, um, the most important thing is that we create stability with our funds so that when we have a downturn economically, that we don't lose as much revenue. Right now we have an, a, a budget system and a funding system where we rely so much just on a few people paying 50% of the taxes. So when the economy goes down, these few people, which are rich people, play Wall Street. So the, our, our uh, revenues are not always based on what the economic activity is in California, but what's going on on Wall Street, so it makes it volatile. So this is why we had a drop in economic activities of uh, a few percentage points, but we had a drop in revenues of 27%. So that means that one year we anticipated $105 billion in revenues, but we ended up with around $80 billion of revenues. So we had to cut in education, we had to cut in higher education, we had to cut our prison budget, our law enforcement budget, in-home services, health care for children, all of those things. It's unfair. So this is why right now I just, been a, I just came from a meeting with my office with a tax commission a bipartisan tax commission to create a different kind of a tax system that creates more stability with our funding and uh, therefore not take the children and schools and all those important services for vulnerable citizens on a roller coaster ride. So that's what we're doing. Okay. Thank you very much, Governor. Thank you for that. Yeah. Secretary? Uh, quickly, these have just been phenomenal questions, and you guys are just really inspiring. This is a smart, smart group, and I just think you guys have so much potential. And if we as adults do the right thing, you guys are going to do extraordinarily well. So thanks for your thoughtfulness. Answering the questions, uh, I've been lucky to have lots of mentors and role models, and Governor talked about how important that is, but probably my biggest hero is Martin Luther King. So reading his writings, reading some biographies of him are what really inspire me. What can students do to help us be, help, uh, to help us, which is a great, great question, uh, I, I'd say three things. First, take your own education absolutely seriously. This is your job now. You owe it to yourself to do well. Secondly, please help your friends. Please help them be successful. Positive peer pressure. And third, please say thank you to your teachers and your principals and parents. Let people know you appreciate them working hard for you. Let's give a round of applause for the governor and the secretary. All right, we have one last student who's going to come up. Uh, Sita is going to come up and close us out. I just want to say to everybody out here, you did a great job today. You guys paid attention, asked incredible questions. I know the governor and the secretary are going to go back and feel very touched by their experience that they had here today. I want to wish everyone a very good back to school. On September 8th, your president is going to be addressing the students directly. So if you get a chance to tune in, September 8th, Tuesday, is a Tuesday, or Tuesday morning at 10 o'clock Pacific, um, the president is going to be talking directly to students. So we should all either tape it or somehow pay attention to that. Let's give, again, the governor and secretary one more round of applause. Hi, everybody. My name is Sita. I'm a senior at the Met Sacramento High School. And I'm basically going to close out by giving each of our guests a t-shirt, ones that you guys are all wearing, the stand-up. And just in hopes that every time they wear it or see the t-shirt, they think about the youth voice because we do have one and we do want to use it. So. Thank you guys. Thank you so much. Last time.